A very warm greetings to one and all. Resilience is the ability to withstand adversity, bounce back, and grow despite life's downturns. And we believe great things happen when there's a gathering of great minds. It is with immense pleasure that I, Mohan Aravin, from second year MSW of DG Vaishnu College, welcome you all to the international conference, Pandemic Aftermath, Building Workplace Resilience. I now request the technical team to play the Tamil Thai Valt. Extend your arms and welcome to the future. The best is yet to come. I now request my fellow student coordinator, Mr. Abdullah, to deliver the welcome address. We wholeheartedly welcome all of you with the desires, hopes, and dreams we all share. Good afternoon to one and all present here. Myself, Abdullah, student coordinator from 2nd MSW, feel very delighted to present the welcome address for the International Conference on Pandemic Aftermath, Building Workplace Resilience. We have with us eminent resource person, Mr. Anand Sivasankar Anand Guru, Evaluation Officer at World Health Organization from Geneva, Switzerland. Thank you for accepting our invite, sir. I'm so happy to welcome you on behalf of our department and the students. It gives me pleasure in welcoming Captain Dr. S. Santosh Babu, the principal of DG Vaishnav College, Chennai, in his absentia. Next, I take great pleasure to welcome Dr. Sulubriya, head, Department of Social Work, and the faculty to this August gathering. I'm so happy to welcome all the students and other participants who have joined the conference from various other countries through Zoom as well as watching in YouTube live. Thank you for making it today. Once again, my greetings and special thanks to each and every one of you who have joined the virtual international conference. Thank you all. I hope you all will have a good learning. Thank you, Thank you Abdullah. Hard work spotlights the character of people. Some turn up their sleeves. Some turn up their noses and some don't turn up at all. There is no substitute for hard work, believes our principal, Captain Dr. S. Santosh Babu. I now request the technical team to play the presidential address from our principal. Jai Sri Krishna. The respected chief guest, uh, faculty members, students, and uh, dear uh, participants, warm greeting. It is a moment of uh, great privilege and honor for me to extend a hearty welcome to all of you today at this special and unique occasion of the Department of Social Work, DG Vaishnav College. I welcome Mr. Anand Sivashankara Karuba, Evaluation Officer of the World Health Organization, Geneva, Switzerland, 
and i thank you for taking time off from your busy schedule to be the resource person for this international conference organized by our dwaragdas gorndas vaishnav college i am extremely happy that the department of social work is organizing an international conference on a theme at the right point of time when the whole world is battling with the pandemic of the present scenario that is health is one hand and economy in other hand truly a very challenging situation the title is pandemic aftermath building workspace resilience it is a significant topic to focus on and also it helps in understanding our setbacks and establish a good work life balance one of the best ways for the organization to address this common concern is to develop resilience and resilience factors to build resilience it is very important to identify and put into practice the ingredients or factors on both organization and also individual level there are major factors on the behavioral health and wellness of the employees due to the pandemic the most common concern are burnout compassion and fatigue and moral injury burnout is observed among employees where we can hear and see people talking about tiredness of body and mind and there is low motivation because of work stress or fluctuations that does not end burnout has occurred as there is an unequal balance between the demand of the job and coping with the new normal if you say our vaishnav college even we have a problem with our workforce where we are concentrating more on nac preparation where the faculty are involved in collecting the data to be presented in the nac portal before pandemic the people used to work very easy and they will be very happily but now with all precautions like wearing mask and following the protocol they find very difficult even coming to the college to work so this is a very great uh, problem faced in the college level by the faculty members and also the students also is finding very difficult to do their research to do their uh, um, uh, placement work and also do their field work so in this uh, environment they are overcoming with uh, taking a very good strategy of following the covid 19 protocol moral injury encompass strong feeling of guilt shame and anger about the fluctuation that comes from not giving the kind of care or service that an employee wants and expects to provide the special concern care and privileges are anticipated by the employees due to the stress and strain arising out of lockdown the best way to address these common concern is to develop resilience and resilience factors resilience is the process of adapting well during hard times dharma tragedy threats or major source of stress it involves changing behaviors thoughts and actions resilience factors are conditions that help a person survive and recover from a crisis or dharma these can include flexibility and adaptability and connection to others to build resilience in the workplace it is important to identify and put into practice the four resilience factors or ingredients on both organizational and individual level being able to adapt and be mentally flexible focusing on developing social connections both big and small developing a shared sense of purpose and focuses on hope these factors of resilience need to operate at the organizational level leadership and individual level to make our workplace better as we fight against the pandemic with this note i wish to congratulate the organizer for conducting this international uh, conference and also the faculty members and student have taken lot of initiative and they have put lot of work in conducting this seminar so definitely this will be the very helpful for the society and also for the public with these few words once again i like to congratulate the department of social work for organizing this uh, international uh, uh, conference on pandemic uh, aftermath aftermath building workspace residents thank you thank you for giving this opportunity thank you thank you sir desire is the starting point of all achievement not a hope not a wish but a keen pulsating desire which transcends everything 
Now we are going to witness an audio visual of the newsletter release of the Department of Social Work, DG Vaishnav College. I request the technical team to play the video. Thank you team. Be dynamic, just like life. Innovate, create, explore, never become stagnant. I now request our assistant professor, Dr. Mother Susan N, to present us about the dynamics of the conference. Please, sir. Uh, thank you, Mohan. Jai Shri Krishna. Good afternoon to all. It's been uh, more than a year. We started to worry, hear, listen, discuss, deliberate the word, uh, the COVID, Corona or the pandemic. On January 30, 2020, the World Health Organization has declared COVID-19 as a public health emergency of international concern. Since the lockdown, the world in general and India in particular came to hiatus. After the unlock in India, we are slowly coming out of uh, the hiatus. Yet in some states, we are seeing uh, the second wave and such something like that. Getting into the groove is difficult after a big break. Swami Vekananda said, strength is life, weakness is death. I repeat, strength is life, weakness is death. Having this as a mood point, this international conference is conceived in understanding the linkages between the pandemic and on building the workplace resilience. This conference will also touch upon the crisis management and appropriate interventions. Even birds sing after a storm. Let us all raise and overcome this critical situation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. On this occasion, it fills me with great pleasure to introduce the resource person who is a man of great stature. I now request my fellow coordinator, Ms. Manjari, to present the guest profile to the gathering. Please, Manjari. It gives me immense pleasure in introducing the resource person, Mr. Anand Shivashankara Kuru. Mr. Anand is a public health professional with 25 years of experience and track record of success spanning local, national, and global level. He has extensive experience in program development, management, partnership building, technical assistance, policy, and advocacy work on various health and development issues. After completing his MPhil in community health, he started his career in non-government organization in India, particularly in community organization for the next three years. As he is an MSW social work graduate, specialized in family and child welfare, he worked as a lecturer in social work department at NISS. Also, he served as a social development officer, director in charge of Kerala for three years. He worked as a senior program officer, international HIV AIDS alliance for four years. And for the next seven years, he worked as a technical officer in social determinants of health. Currently, he is working in 
World Health Organization for 14 years as an evaluation officer in Geneva. Apart from this, he got certified from Global Health Leadership Forum, University of California, and for Advanced Data Modeling from University of East, East Anglia. Thank you so much for being connected with us today, sir. Great to be connected. Thank you, Manjiri, for that wonderful introduction. I now request the resource person of the day, Mr. Anand Sivasankara Kurup, to address the gathering. Please, sir. Thank you very much, um, dear uh, colleagues, faculty members uh, of social work department uh, and uh, students of social work across uh, different parts of the world. Uh, may I request you to start the presentation, uh, or, you know, show the presentation. Okay, the, I'll, I'll start my presentation um, by um, uh, explaining the global current global situation, the uh, global situation of COVID-19 pandemic. Next slide, please. Um, currently, there are um, twelve about twelve crore um, people uh, diagnosed, uh, confirmed cases of COVID-19, and. Um, uh, more than uh, 27 lakhs people died. That's about 124 million people uh, uh, confirmed uh, with COVID-19 and um, 2.7 million people uh, died of uh, COVID-19. Next slide, please. So uh, as, as you are already, uh, as you are aware, um, United States um, has the first, uh, you know, place in, uh, in terms of number of cases um, followed by Brazil, India, Russian Federation, and the United Kingdom. So the first five places and India is among one of those top three uh, with um, more than 11 million um, confirmed cases and 50 plus 50,000 plus deaths. Next slide, please. Uh, the India situation, as I said, just mentioned, we have uh, more than 11 million um, confirmed cases, and uh, you know, 160 plus uh, thousand. 160,000 deaths. Next slide. And uh, in terms of the the members, uh, the, the uh, um, uh, states that have been mostly affected are Maharashtra, Kerala, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu. And you know these are the uh, there are um, vast number of, vast number of um, uh, confirmed cases are in these states. Um, Next slide, please. Moving to, uh, so I just wanted to give a kind of a brief introduction about um, the COVID-19 situation, the pandemic in uh, at the global level. Moving to the drivers of fragility. Um, there are, you know, the fragility of uh, countries and the, the, the pandemic, uh, entails in an increased risk of possible shocks that should inform decisions related to organization. When a pandemic occurs, um, you know, there, there are the, this fragility comes in. And there are two factors, two, two broad factors. One is the exogenous fact, factors uh, that, you know, two broad factors that can increase the fragility. One is the exogenous factors that are catastrophic events, could be health pandemics, global trade and financial crisis, external military threats, uh, flows of refugees or migrant workers from one place to another. There are also endogenous factors that is weak, could be due to weak democratic governance and dysfunctional public institutions, social political crisis, high levels of non-conflict violence, and armed group activity or population movements, demographic pressures or social and economic inequalities. 
and marginalization. Next slide, please. Um, work would be the last thing on my list. I wouldn't long log on. I wouldn't check to see what they're asking for. I probably wouldn't even care because it's a job at the end of the day. My life is at risk. This is said by uh, uh, an employer for finance sector. Well, this is from a research into likely variations in you know, human and organizational response to extreme crisis events and the steps organization should take you know, both before and during such events to create more crisis resilient workforce. Um, as in the case of um, you know, every, each and every individual, we react to crisis in, in different ways. But at the same time, um, you know, when it comes to uh, th uh, threat of our life, we you know, try to, uh, be, to play safe. And we also you know, wouldn't care well, you know, um, to go to work because of the threat is, is uh, for, for our life. Next slide, please. In a crisis, uh, uh, you know, resilient workforce model, there are several factors uh, that we need to take into account. As, as uh, one of the um, speakers before um, told us, um, there are several factors. One is the economic factors. Second one is the psychosocial factors. We also need to consider um, the need for a proper and effective communication by responding to the emerging needs of the staff. There are also interventions that need to be uh, taken, uh, uh, undertaken or, uh, to support the staff um, and uh, the roles and responsibilities need to be very clear. So in order to make the, uh, the workforce uh, crisis resilient, you need to uh, do a number of things that um, you know, affect their life, affect their work. Next slide, please. In terms of the economic factors, when um, this COVID-19 pandemic was uh, you know, uh, um, declared, one of the major concerns of most of the, the workforce, the staff, was that do I you know, lose my job? Um, so the fear of losing jobs, layoffs, you know, in many of the private sectors, there were several Layoff, so the people, are, the staff are afraid that they will they would lose uh, their job. Loss of income, it could be by you know uh, uh, losing part of their job and part of their income. Loss of incentives, many of the the you know private sector companies, um, they, they are they, their work is mostly incentivized in terms of how much profit they br bring in. So the loss of incentives, loss of responsibilities and related incentives, some of them have major responsibilities to bring in uh, profit. And if they lose their, their you know, responsibilities, they, the related in incentives would also go away. Loss of promotion, because some of, so, you know, many of, because of the crisis, because of the economic situation, um, many of the, uh, the companies, many of the organizations would decide to freeze promotions, transfer to other locations. If they close down one or, one or two of those major offices, they, some of the staff would have to be transferred to other locations. Uh, there are other also uh, other 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 uh, uh, economic factors such as increased health expenditure for self and family. Uh, it could be for ad, you know additional expenditure for care of elderly. You know when you are th there uh, um, in in a, in a non-pandemic situation, you know you would probably care, but in a pandemic situation, you may have to have um, additional uh, people to support you. Quarantine expenses, well, we have seen uh, in the initial um, um, 
months of uh, the pandemic, um, people were asked to stay in hotels when they're, they're traveling to one city to another. Um, so that increased their, their expenditure. Uh, and in some cases, online education added, especially to the poor, to buy new equipment, new new uh, technologies, um, and so that that's that also add to their um, expenditure. Loss of savings due to financial crisis and loss of income, so they may have to use uh, some of their savings to take care. And when the pandemic uh, uh, is spread over a year plus now, and then when it moves to you know coming months and probably years. Um, you know, they will have to take care of uh, all these aspects. So uh, any, any response to make the workforce resilient would need to take um, care of some of these aspects, some of these major aspects that affect their life. Next slide, please. Psychosocial factors. Um, I, I, I will explain that later also, um, but uh, the first one is risk perception. Um, one could be pessimistic that, you know, um, uh, there is a high risk of me getting, as a staff, me getting uh, infected with uh, the virus, uh, or, a pessim or, or an optimistic um, that is low risk, I am not going to be uh, affected as a staff of this particular organization because of these, these things. But uh, the response from individuals, um, individual staff members um, actually uh, 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 kind of, um, you know, make it um, a positive or negative, uh, you know, re reaction to the, the um, to, to get the infection. So the next, aspect is lack of informal interaction with colleagues. I mean, I've been talking to many of my colleagues. I've been working from home since uh, March and ex uh, except, uh, you know, for a few weeks, um, we've all, all, all been working from home. And one of the major concerns is that there is no socialization. I mean, you're stuck at home. This affects, affect, you know, your, your um, uh, uh, psychological, you know, fact, I mean, uh, condition. I mean, you are not able to informally interact with your colleagues. You're always uh, serious, you know, working on certain things and, you know, you're not um, uh, able to uh, informally intro interact and, and understand uh, each other's viewpoints um, to, to get to know each other. Um, that's very important in, in a team to work closely uh, and, and, you know, when you work on a very large project, you need to really understand each other and, um, and, and that informal interaction is a, is a must. Um, uh, virtual interactions are, you know, there is a limit to, li limit to, to the, the, those virtual interactions. Um, isolation from family or friends or community. I mean, that, that's another thing. Many of my friends and, you know, many, uh, are talking about it. We are fed up now. You know, it's already one year, but it's going to continue for some more time. But how do we do? I mean, in in a, in a, in a workplace, if you want to cre create that um, resilient workforce, what do you do to to uh, you know reduce this um, isolation from family and friends and community, which is important for mental health? Safety concerns of uh, Family or colleagues' safety, family members, you know, elderly or or with uh, chronic um, health conditions. Um, that's another ma major um, uh, major issue that uh, we need to address. Um, st most of the staff have got you know their their parents or elderly at home. Um, they're concerned about that, and also you know some of our colleagues who are chronic, uh, who have uh, chronic conditions. Um, change in work hours. Um, I, I think, you know, the, the initial months of the pandemic, what I heard 
from my friends and colleagues across the globe was actually that you know now um, we had actually we, we had uh, a, 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 you know limited uh, a fixed time for work nine to five thirty or nine to six or eight to you know five um, but now that has changed people are um, forced to you know work at uh, different uh, odd times at night and you know there is no limit to, to or restriction to the time um, people are sending emails at you know midnight and so that's a, that's another concern change in work hours um, the other aspect is worry of of our own health um, because of the restricted uh, travel restricted uh, uh, you know um, open i mean place um, for for any uh, physical exercise there is a worry of one's own health it's not easy to also access health care when because of the covid um, you know 19 restrictions in many cases um, reduced contact with supervisors i mean that's another thing which you know when you are working in a team you are uh, uh, you are um, you know w- working with your supervisors with your managers um, and if there is a reduced contact with them there is no kind of recognition of work for uh, accomplishments and not getting sufficient support for, for work from home this is another concern i've heard from many uh, many of my friends that oh you know i'm working from home but you know i'm not getting sufficient support increased family responsibilities i mean this is in particular for women um, especially in the context of india in india you know you get uh, to work at home and uh, take care of uh, you know your work so that's that's a major concern raised by um, female colleagues of uh, um, female friends of mine um, that, that they are um, they are uh, if they are they they are supposed to take care of you know two two jobs um taking care of the family and the children and i've also seen virtual meetings children you know coming in and they're you now talking to the mother and uh, um, and you know t- taking so care of those children uh, um when um, working from home is also extremely difficult and you don't have um, uh, you know easy access to um uh, you know, for people to take care of um, your kids next slide please Uh, at the global level um there is a uh, you know kind of um because of covid-19 um a lot of change in the total employment is going to happen at different in in different sectors if you see this slide um you know health technology uh, care workers this is going to the, their need um of in in you know from now to 2030 is going to really change so there is an increasing need for certain sectors of service such as healthcare technology care workers etc health professionals also in some countries there's an increase there's an increasing need increasing you know this is going to expected to change um managers yes it's going to increase but the in certain sectors it's going to you know reduce the need or or, or the employment is going to slightly change um so for example uh yeah uh, um education um sector in some countries you know it's going to be quite a lot of focus on online education now um if this is this pandemic is going to continue for some you know couple more years if i you know if i um, see this but this is going to change the, the construction work if the economy is affected um the constructions are going to be you know affected um mechanical installation repair all these things are going to slightly decrease the need for such uh, sectors food services uh people are work, if people are work, going to work from home uh it the the need is going to be changing yeah decreasing in the coming 
uh, years. Um, um, some to, in certain places, uh, like in Geneva, where I live, many restaurants I've seen being closed in the last one year. Um, we see advertisements of you know closing down these you know, these places and selling their uh, you know properties. So that's that's a big uh, thing. But in India, I see that you know um, the hotel industry is kind of coming back now. But I think you know there are so some of the sectors are going to. Uh, what I want to say is that some of the sectors are going to be really affected. Some sectors will have a really good increase in the terms of number of jobs available. Next one, please. Uh, so COVID-19 actually has also um, made uh, some solid changes in terms of, um, you know, um, the transition of jobs to, you know, of, of uh, people, I mean, people moving from one job to another. So this is going to have a um, major impact in many countries, including in India. India is still much better, but you know, many uh, developed countries, this is a serious concern that people have to change one, from one job to another. Next, please. The occupational risk pyramid, I mean, uh, is another thing which I, I wanted to touch upon. Um, uh, there are, uh, as I mentioned earlier, there are certain groups of um, people uh, or workers that are at very high risk, such as the healthcare workers who have direct contact with patients um, on a day-to-day -day -day basis. There are high risk category of um, workers also like health care, delivery support staff, um, medium risk uh, in terms of, you know, people uh, getting uh, possible to get um, infected because of their co contact with potential, you know, um, people who are infected uh, potentially. Um, those are like school staff, teachers, and lowest risk probably is office staff. Again, when you say this, uh, you know, it also depends upon, you know, how you trans travel to the office, um, how crowded is your office, how, you know, um, difficult it is to move from one place to another, and what kind of precautions you take at the office. As I mentioned earlier, just to, you know, also, uh, um, this also, also uh, there is also a concept of this risk perception where, um, people can be uh, pessimistic about their uh, uh, you know, risk uh, of getting infected that can increase their risk height, you know, and then, then you know, do not, um, uh, and the people can be optimistic about their risk, uh, or the, the risk of getting infected. Um, so that's a, Another aspect you might have to think of when, when you know, when you plan uh, in in the workplace. Next slide, please. Effective communication. Um, this uh, any pandemic, uh, any crisis situation would need the office, the the organization to uh, effectively communicate to its staff. It's um, you know. Uh, um, the workforce, there is a need for proper and effective communication by identifying concerns and needs of the staff. Uh, you need to really identify the needs of the staff by um, uh, engaging them, by talking to them. Um, you need to try to address those concerns early on and also respond to the emerging needs of staff because the initial stages, the fear probably would have uh, changed to a different uh, particular kind of fear, could have changed to another kind of fear. Um, so that's, you know, need to be addressed. Um, accurate information uh, is need to be provided in a timely manner. So we need to provide the really accurate information about the pandemic. How is How does it spread? How uh, can they um, also, you know, um, 
prevent the, the spread of uh, the, the virus. Um, it, so that means, you know, educate the employees on, a, on, on the actual risk. Um, you need to keep transparency in all your communications. You cannot try to hide things, especially in a crisis situation. You need to be very transparent in communicating with your workforce. Uh, information, um, it is also not just important, important on what the accuracy of information or how you communicate, but by whom, uh, you know, if any serious concern that uh, concerns that, uh, you know, affect the morale of the staff need to be communicated by the top senior management of the, of the organization. Um, other, you know, technical uh, uh, concerns could be addressed by a technical person within the team. But, um, you know, it, so that means the information need to be communicated by the competent authorities and not just a, an email by someone you know uh, in the office to circulate to everyone so um, that's a, that's an important aspect refine the message based on continuous feedback i think you know the feedback loop is important um, you need to really think of what uh, 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 what kind of uh, um, needs that are emerging, uh, the, the, what kind of concerns are emerging from the staff, from the workforce, you need to really think of refining your me message and communicating back um, by clarifying. Next slide, please. Interventions. One of the major concerns, uh, we, we saw that in the economic uh, you know, uh, factors that are going through the mind of employees and the, the workforce is about job loss. Um, in any, any such crisis situation, the first thing that the management need to make sure is um, to provide an assurance of, if possible, to provide an assurance of no job loss or income loss um, to start with. That keeps actually, you know, half of Half of uh, you know the the the, the uh, um, mental health of of, of uh, uh, staff because they are concerned you know whether they would jo lose jobs. Um, accurate and timely information, as I mentioned earlier, you need to really and uh, that's a that's a uh, an important aspect. Psychological support, uh, you know, in a crisis situation, in a in a pandemic situation, as um, uh, uh, this is known that you know people are mental health of staff are really affected that need to be uh, addressed um, healthcare um, you know this is another concern uh, you know how would i survive if i get this infection so there is a need for linking with insurance public health care system so that's important that you know that's the, the staff is made uh, aware of the possibilities of getting uh, attention for any um, a, a disease that they may get during this pandemic situation. So uh, the support system for getting healthcare um, support. Other aspects, people are already doing that options for work from home, um, you know, in, 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 a, in a very you know, high, uh, community spread of uh, um, COVID-19 of you know the virus SARS-CoV virus. You need to think of you know allowing people to work from home or flexible having flexible work hours uh, in order to reduce the risk of everyone getting infected, and also allowing people who are uh, who have their families affected. Uh, so you need to be compassionate in terms of, in terms of supporting the, the, the workforce. Gender and workplace, I mentioned that uh, um, before. Um, there are special needs of women that need to be addressed. Um, that you know, could be childcare, it could be transport, it could be um, also you know, taking and care of the family. So that's a flexible work hours thing. So that's another aspect you might want to consider. Next slide, please. 
another thing is in a big organization in big organizations you know can we take it take the pandemic as an opportunity um in many many industries many many sectors they have to actually rethink what they want to you know where they want to be in 2 3 2 3 years time because of this pandemic and they have to think ahead otherwise they, their business opportunities would collapse you know the 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 their their sector their their um, company would collapse so pandemic as an opportunity to rethink their vision uh, reprioritize um you know uh, if they are doing something uh, that is there is no need for it can we you know use the same staff and re prioritize uh, what they want to do um so that's another aspect restructuring of um, organization that's also possible um you know you uh, want to reduce some some aspect of the work because there is no need um, you know things are changing um for example in hotel hotel industries you know you see that um they they are now having more people delivering at home uh earlier because the restaurants are closed in many places because of the lockdown so they have to rethink of restructuring how you know what to do with their workforce with the participation of the workforce i mean that's very important i mean uh, retraining if they if it is needed um uh, it's not just you know asking them to do a new job but also retrain or train them in the new responsibilities upgrading technology this is very important uh, especially in a, in a virtual world um you you know earlier it was possible to have uh, one one on one meetings or meetings with a large group but now it's not possible so you need to adapt and uh, upgrade technology to 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 meet the needs of the current uh, situation um use of advanced technologies um uh one of the major concerns for any uh, staff who have been uh, working for a long time is that you know they are not used to advanced technologies using advanced technologies they shouldn't be marginalized uh you know but because they are uh you know working with you uh, for, for a long time so you shouldn't actually marginalize already marginalized workers um for example engaging workers in the planning itself stage itself is important uh, um in a pandemic situation acknowledging and rewarding contributions is is again an important aspect because there is a low a morale and any uh, you know um uh, good job any job um done well done by the staff should be acknowledged and rewarded uh rewarding emerging leadership in in crisis situations you see that you know new and emerging leadership of uh, you know of, of of new you know pe- people from the lower ranks so they they have to be rewarded um, um and that actually keeps motivating the team and you need to keep motivating the team uh celebrate success so any success need to be celebrated that's very important for creating a you know kind of resilient workforce after this um uh, pandemic um uh, and most uh, i think you know not um the last but least you know need to think of managers health i mean i i've seen quite a lot of managers taking on themselves in in terms of you know um kind of um uh, running the show uh um, without thinking of their health you also need to think of your own health by uh addressing you know by ad- addressing concerns your own concerns um next slide please so in a in a nutshell what uh need to be done in getting workplace ready for covid-19 um you know people are back at work I, i i know that you know in many places it's already um, back to work but in in some places like ours you know we are yet uh, to go back to work um, there are some essential staff at 
or office but um, so keep the workplaces clean and hygienic promote regular and thorough hand washing um, promote good respiratory hygiene um, travel you know reduce travel as much as possible or postpone it um, you know to to other places if, if you have to travel to other places reduce it advise those who are sick to stay back stay at home um, promote regular and thorough hand washing which as we already said put sanitizing hand wrap dispensers in prominent places in the office if there is a in a crowded uh, office in those crowded offices and uh, you know do make sure that you know you have uh, hand sanitizers available for people to access it um, staff uh, and and you know customers and and contractors all everyone gets uh, this access to this and um, encourage you know wearing mask and social distancing that's important as well thank you very much for your patience and i'm very um, uh, happy to receive any comments you may have any questions you may have thank you thank you sir thanks a lot for the 360 degree analysis of the present situation with an input of what has happened and what has happened has to be done too it has once again reminded all of us to be responsible through this tough time and tied it together the question and answer session is open now and anyone willing to post the questions can post the questions in chat box or if you want to ask in person you can switch on your video and ask please Uh, good afternoon, sir. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Deepy uh, Prabha from That's second year M. Push up, moving. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Yeah. Good afternoon. Yes. Can't hear you. Uh, sir, I have a question regarding uh, the training, employee training uh, during the COVID nineteen pandemic, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, the work from home option has uh, made it difficult uh, for the employees, uh, like pro in providing in person training, sir. Mm -hmm. So it mm -hmm. does uh, like. it has impacted the training and the development of the employees so how can it be uh, how can the training made be made effective sir in the work from home options dot so this is my question sir yeah I, there are different uh, ways of doing that I, i think you know the first and foremost thing is that you need to adapt to the new situation there is no other way so um you know any uh, any training would need to be adjusted uh, to to the 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 current situation you're not uh, you know by organizing mass trainings uh, you you know it's 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 good that uh, you know you organize that when when it is possible but otherwise you need to really think of um, making use of the technology um making use of um, you know um, adult uh, uh, learning methods by you know online organizing online trainings adapting your uh, tools uh, to make it you know kind of online friendly tool so people are doing that already now um because they understand that it's not easy to organize you know um or, you know face to face training programs anymore um, as in the past so you, you always have to you know adapt to the new situation and uh, look at possible ways of um possible ways of you know uh, using the new technology to to train the staff okay 
Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Dipti. Okay, sir. Um, I have a question here. Yeah. In this pandemic situation, um, when we compare to the uh, developed nations and the developing nations, uh, we can see the developing nations are countering it well. but the population which is below the poverty line is more in the developing nations so the impact though the impact of covid uh, in at a personal level is less in developing nations uh, but at a economic level it is very much uh, severe in the developing nations only so uh, how can we save those uh, laborers who uh, who work for uh, like daily wages and uh, not only in india i have also heard like in south africa also people are on streets because of this situation because of not going to work and the strain there the coronavirus strain there is like a severe one than the other thing other uh, strains so how equipped are we or how equipped the world is to save the uh, the lower rank of people really good question um this is uh, this is one of the concerns uh, concerns we all have as social uh, scientists or you know social science uh, you know, people with a social science background um one is that you know, you know you are, any in any crisis situation the low, lowest um socio economic categories you know people in the lowest socio economic categories are the most affected um by by flood or by you know by uh, uh, any any uh, natural calamities or you know so they others can kind of immediately come back to life if they don't lose their life um in the situation of uh, covid-19 we have um, less number of people infected compared compared to other other you know in, in uh, uh, other countries i mean developed countries less numbers in terms of less percentage of people i mean um so in this case um what we need to uh, look at is that each of us have to play our own roles the governments um have an you know they have an important role um you need to have a compassionate government to look into you know look into the uh, lives of um people um at the lowest levels socio economic uh, levels um because of uh, you know uh, rich people in any country would be able to afford uh you know like food and um, healthcare and so they they are able to afford um but uh, as as you rightly said the the people at the you know poorest people are the most affected we need to look into the governments playing a major role uh, because they have the resources we need to have compassionate governments civil society has a major role and i have seen that happening in many places in india where the civil society organizations playing major role by providing food organizing you know packed food um organizing health camps or you know providing you know, basic medicines and things like that that's possible uh if they have resources um, um i think most importantly as students of social work um you know you have a role to play um in in terms of supporting the communities in and around you at least in and around you you know um that could be by mobilizing resources to support them that could be you know it, it, even if it is in in a small way like you know if you if you are seeing you know 10 or 15 families um really affected by not having jobs or not having income and you know providing free food itself is a you know for the time being it's not a long term thing crisis is never a long term thing i mean this one can long a little bit longer but uh, otherwise you know so that's that that is i think everyone has a role to play um most importantly as i say mentioned you need to have compassionate governments taking looking into the lives of um lowest uh, you know socio economic categories thank you thank you sir thank you uh, it was good to hear that humanity must come again to save us 
um okay participants okay sir we have a question from dr sai kumar uh could you please tell us uh, how the who and ilo have worked strategically together uh with workers all over the world as well as in india oh okay and this is a very uh, tricky question because not my it's not my area of work um so um i think i need to refer back to you know proper documents and things like that but definitely at a, at a global level and um, you know country level all the un agencies are working closely together to respond to the covid-19 pandemic um there are at the country level there are un country teams working together um which include ilo and um, who um and many other you know unicef and other other organizations they have a un country uh, team plans that be that's being uh, you know implemented uh, at country level who also work closely with the ministries of health um to to plan uh, country cooperation you know that we we have a country cooperation strategy at the country level which is it's last usually for five years and you know and which is being kind of monitored and um uh, uh, and implemented jointly with the ministries of health um we also work we are, we are also part of as i mentioned earlier we are also part of the um un country teams you know where all these health and uh, development issues are addressed um uh, there is also you know at who we also have mental health um uh, department focusing on a number of mental health issues they are also working with um, um there is a um uh, health emergency department so they are working closely with health emergency department on on these issues um so that that's i think in a nutshell but um, the details i i wouldn't be knowing um by you know uh, now but yeah i'll be happy to you know uh, um, check and and let you know thank you okay sir uh, sai kumar sir has again a question uh, can mm-hmm. you please deliberate as about the mental health policy thought at who on the pandemic uh, okay yeah this is again I, i was telling there is a mental health uh, department um, which is working closely with uh, the uh, health emergencies team uh, department yeah. so there is a large team working on it um and they are create you know one of the major roles of who is actually in uh, creating normative normative guidelines on many issues so this is in the you know this is a uh, major uh, work we are doing also yeah okay sir There's we another... have uh, we have the other question from dr sadananda reddy he is asking Sadanana. how to develop re- resilience among the students during this pandemic thank you yeah that's an that's an important question as well um students come from you know homes i mean just to say that you know they are uh, part of the family they they are you know part of a community so they when the family is affected when the family or the community where they live is affected the students are also affected their the family's income are you know affected and then the the students are again uh, affected so just just to say that you know they are part of the whole um family and community living um uh resilience among students i think it, it's it's the first thing is to engage them in uh, uh in in planning um you know so uh, any any situation i think you know they have the energy they have uh, they have a kind of uh, vision for future so it's important that we engage them from from the beginning to 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 plan for any ever make any plans you know so you know, we need to engage them um they have creative ideas i mean i think technology is one example where you know youngsters uh and, and students are able to really excel and you know than the the um elderly you know all the um Uh, adult population uh, we we want to say i mean it's basically so there is a lot of energy a lot of uh, ideas so that we need to really use make use um uh, i think it's important um, that you know they are uh, part of the 
monitoring as well as you know evaluation of what what we have learned i mean it's a good opportunity for students especially for social work students i see that you know pandemic and aftermath of pandemic and how um, how you can engage yourself and involve yourself in in planning for for uh, you know supporting communities um, it's a good, good learning opportunity i would say thank you sir thank you for the input uh, we have one more question from uh, mrs aruna kumari she has asked can you share one successful program through your evaluation in developing countries mm-hmm. um okay that's a good question um we have been doing evaluation i mean i have been working with the wh evaluation office since 2014 we have done a um, very large evaluation of five country uh, implementation uh of um child health malaria malaria and child health pr- program in africa we did a, an evaluation 3 years ago um mm-hmm. this was funded by uh, a canadian agency uh, the government uh, canadian government this program actually has really uh you know impacted the lives of poor people across five countries in africa by providing simple things like you know medicines at the in the villages um when you um look into uh, you know the lives of people poor people in any developing countries you would see that um <laughs> the, their lives are you know like they don't have access to medi- medicines um they don't have access to a clinic small clinic so this program actually was funding uh, setting up very small clinics train the village workers who are not uh, doctors or you know nurses just uh, you know school um yeah, yeah high school um uh, i mean you know pass um with, with you know very little education but they were trained in diagnosing you know, uh, children's uh, diseases and also imp- most importantly referring them to a higher level from the village so that actually has impacted in malawi i've seen in you know, mozambique and the drc congo we did a good evaluation of that by you know visiting i also visited one of the countries malawi i visited rural areas you know um we could see the changes you know at least addressing and uh, so that evaluation report is actually online you can also access it in who website who.int/evaluation so there are you know evaluation reports you can see it's called race program evaluation rse race program evaluation yeah thank you sir thank you sir uh, participants we have slot for one last question would anyone like to volunteer okay we have a question from deepaveni uh, she is asking what should other countries battling pandemic learn from countries that managed lockdown and pandemic situation successfully yeah that's a good question um i think there are quite a lot of things to learn i mean this pandemic um this disease uh, is a new one um so everyone uh, even if they're doing small things uh have you know we have to learn from each other there is no other way um you know so it's only just one year old um virus uh, you know it came to existence you know one, one year ago we identified this virus probably that that was there before but you know we we didn't identify um so this virus actually uh addressing this virus and the scientists across the world actually learned step by step you know understanding the nature understanding how it spread how it spread and understanding how it can be prevented so everything kind of any any pandemic situation you would do that um across the globe you learn actually from each other um in this case i i would say you know initially we thought um a, you know complete lockdown would uh, uh would um prevent the pandemic you know the, the virus spreading but we found that yes it is true but how long you know so it's important and uh, that how 
how can we reduce the impact as we mentioned or we discussed earlier how can we you know reduce the impact of this pandemic um uh, upon the lives of um, you know lower sections of our population i think that's a good learning to a good a good um, aspect to learn from each other um um they, i think you know many countries have used because of the resources available even few, uh, countries with large resources were not able to prevent um the pandemic uh, spreading and you know, the the disease virus spreading so i think it's important that um uh, Uh, we learn from how um countries are organizing their healthcare system um in in those countries where you know pandemic situations were uh, con- controlled um so that's the second aspect one is this as i said mentioned you know how um we are reducing the impact on the lower sections of the population um by uh, having you know compassionate policies compassionate uh, support systems creating support systems um and even the latest one is the, the vaccination i th- you know like how equitably we are um uh able to to supply vaccines to people across different sections of the society you know it's not just limited to the you know the rich people but you know it's accessible to the lower sections of the population as well thank you uh thank you sir uh we have a few international participants as well uh, uh if anyone is willing to have a question we can have it now please go ahead okay uh Okay thank you participants for your questions and thank you sir for all your wonderful insights now moving on to the next part of this wonderful session resilience is not a trampoline when you are down one moment and up the next it's more like climbing a mountain without a trail map it takes time strength and help from people around you and you like you likely experience setbacks along the way but eventually you reach the top and look back at how far you have come I now request my fellow coordinator Aishwarya to render the vote of thanks. Aishwarya please. Gratitude is not only the greatest virtue but the pattern for all of us. By this quote I would like to propose the vote of thanks on behalf of our organizing committee. I mention my deep sense of gratitude to our resource person Shri Anand Shivashankar Kuru for honoring us and sharing the best insights on pandemic aftermath building workspace resilience i express my heartly gratitude to our head of the department dr sunupriya for giving us this opportunity i would like to thank our faculty coordinators dr akhileshwari and dr madhusudan for guidance and encouragement in all our efforts here now i would like to take a minute to thank our team members who have been the backbone for this event initially i would like to thank dr rajendran and ms shamili from rotra club of alandur for our technical support next the prerequisite committee headed by mr niranjan from second msw and his team ms deepthi prabha and ms ritu from second msw for generating and taking care of registration feedback formalities thank you so much team next i would like to thank the masters of this event Mr Mohan Arman and Ms Manjuri from second MSW for the smooth progress of this event. Next, I would like to thank my fellow coordinator Mr K F Abdullah from second MSW for supporting us from the scratch. Finally, I would like to thank our faculty members and our classmates. Last but not the least, the very soul of this event, you audience who have been participating from various other city colleges and we would also like to thank our international participants who have joined us from various countries and regions like united states russia colombia and africa in spite of your time zones and differences i would like to thank each and every individual who have been patiently involving in this event stay safe stay healthy 
Thank you. Thank you, Ashwarya. I now request the participants to switch on their videos for a group photo. Please, participants. technical team is it done okay okay thank you participants now we are into the end of the session a sunset is nothing more and nothing less than the back side of a sunrise all good things will have to come to an end we conclude today's program with the national anthem i request the technical team to play the national anthem जनगण मन अधिनायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कल बंगा विंध्य हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जलधि तरंगा तव शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तव जय गाथा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे Jaya, 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 Jaya. Uh, my dear participants, the feedback form for the program has been uh, posted in the YouTube live chat box as well as the Zoom chat box. I request all of you to fill it, and your certificates would be mailed within this week. And I would like to again thank you all from the bottom of my heart for making this event a grand success. Thank you all. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Uh, technical team, can you please uh, switch off the live YouTube live?